The beached shipwreck is a location specific to Near Replicant version 1.22 that wasn't in the original releases of the games. It serves as the setting for a short story called The Little Mermaid, wait no, The Little Mermaid, wait no, The Little Mermaid, originally published in Grimoire Near and later added to this 2021 re-release of the game. I'm going to spoil this plot arc completely, including root differences, so even if you've played Gestalt all the way through, there may be spoilers in this video for you. Music plays a direct role in the story of The Little Mermaid, and so appropriately, Keigo Hawashi and Keiichi Okabe wrote a new song for it called Fleeting Words, and this is our very first exposure to it. Can you believe that isn't on the soundtrack? As funny as it sounds, in context, it's kind of unsettling, until you have even more context when it becomes tragic, so, you know, par for the course. But before we get into all that, I've got to tell you about this video's sponsor, Atlas VPN. If you're concerned about internet safety, you couldn't ask for a beefier security package at a lower price. You just, you couldn't. You want privacy from your internet service provider? Done. You want the internet to feel like less of a minefield of malware? Piece of cake. You want to watch The Walking Dead without moving to the US? Who could blame you? Atlas VPN runs on tons of operating systems and as many devices as you like. And if you use the link below, it's just $1.83 a month for three years, plus three months, plus a 30 day money back guarantee. But my favorite thing about Atlas VPN is that they're helping me panic less about bills and they didn't have to do that. So thank you, Atlas VPN, for supporting indie creators, and thank you for being here. Follow the link in the description to take advantage of this limited time offer, and you'll be surfing safely, like, less than five minutes from now. Just because it's your birthday. Maybe. Probably not. This is Louise, and she wants to be where the people are. She's been practicing her singing. Do you like it? D you? Fleeting Words is written specifically for Louise. It only plays when the narrative is focused on her. So Hoashi and Okabe reference her character traits in the music very specifically. So specifically, in fact, that to make sure we're all on the same page, I'm going to take the next 30 seconds to tell you a little about her story arc. <clears throat> Nier tries to find a missing person. He finds him. He also finds this girl, and the postman shows up, and he's like, yeah, that's Louise, I just kind of leave her here. But Louise is really a shade, and she's been eating people, so the heroes kill her, and everyone moves on. But that's Route A. In Route B, we learn that the postman has been visiting her for quite a while, bringing her food, teaching her to write, and singing to her, which is how she learns fleeting words. And Louise loves it. She desperately wants to be human, and doesn't know that isn't an option, so she eats people, because surely that will work, and she forces herself into a human shape. She tries to write, she tries to sing, she tries to love, but none of it is enough. And then she dies, directed by Yokotar. Okay, now we can start. There are two arrangements of fleeting words, outsider and family. Outsider is climactic battle music that focuses on Louise's monstrous form and deadly power. The light, nostalgic family arrangement emphasizes her tender qualities and the soft, timid side of her that can be considered her true self. And the names of these two tracks obviously come from the two fully separate ways others treat her during the story. Despite the track listing, Fleeting Words Outsider plays first when the battle with Louise begins. It has a short introductory phrase that mimics both the family arrangement and the part of the song we hear her practicing. Then, a lot of things happen at once. The tempo jumps up, the time signature changes, and the instrumentation shifts from tinkly and mermaidy to brassy and aggressive. It seems pretty safe to say that this part represents Louise's transformation, as her true form is revealed and her true nature tucked away. There's already something funky going on with the phrase lengths of this song. That's hard to say, phrase lengths. A phrase in music is a short segment that feels relatively complete on its own, like a sentence in language. Phrases are almost always four measures, though whether that's from nature or from nurture is up for debate. But nearly all music is a constant flow between tension and resolution, and phrases really like to begin or end with resolution. So if after four measures you have no resolution, and after five you have a big resolution, Well, four measures be damned, that's a five measure phrase. What kind of freak would call that the natural break point between these two ideas? Phrases with strange lengths aren't all that uncommon. You'll often see one or two creep up in classical music or progressive genres, but Fleeting Words Outsider has a lot. I think this may be symbolic of Louise's limited ability in music and human behavior in general. When we hear her sing, it just sounds bad, so mimicking that directly wouldn't work in the soundtrack. So if the notes can't be janky, the next best thing is to mess with the phrases. That's the most effective way this soundtrack can subvert expectations without being outright distracting. It's a subtle effect, one I didn't notice until I sat down to make this video. 
So if my interpretation is correct, that means this detail was put here with the full knowledge that fewer than like 1% of players would ever notice it. That's how you know when people love their work. I believe Hawashi and Okabe put considerable effort into portraying what makes Louise unique among shades. There is so much to examine in this track. As is common in version 1.22, the sheer amount of stuff going on at any moment is staggering. When we get to the chorus, we hear this call and response in the vocals. I have another theory here, but I think this one's weaker. I think it's possible the second voice is meant to represent Louise following the postman's lead as he teaches her. Harmonically speaking, the chorus is unusually warm for combat music. Lots of major chords at play here, which together make this minor key song sound almost happy at times. The last chord in this phrase is tense. You can tell because stopping there feels like a cliffhanger. But it's also the end of the phrase. This link in the chain is complete, and it's time to start the next one. In classical music, a common technique for carrying tension across multiple phrases is to end a phrase with a tense chord, but make the chord before it even more tense. That way there is still a resolution of tension that ends the phrase, but the tension doesn't have to start again from zero. And that's exactly what's happening here. This chord is C-sharp major, so to better understand why this works, here's what that resolution would sound like in the key C-sharp major. Vastly different, right? Now the same chords give us a very satisfying ending. Context is key. Literally, the key is what makes this progression tense. If I play that same clip you just heard on top of fleeting words... Now the very same notes carry tension. Music theory is basically wizardry. At the end of the chorus, we have another unusual phrase ending. At first glance, there's nothing odd about it. It's a long tense chord into a long resolving chord. You can tell when you hear it that that is the end of the chorus. It resolves a lot of tension that stays resolved over a decent period of time. But the chord with the least tension in our key of F sharp minor is the F sharp minor chord. And this is F sharp sus4. The middle chord tone is higher than it would be in F sharp minor, which has two effects. One is that the chord is no longer major or minor, because all of these notes are in both F sharp keys, and the other is that there is mild dissonance between the top two chord tones because they're pretty close together. Here's F sharp minor versus F sharp sus4. This second chord isn't as dark, but it also isn't as grounded. This matches the idea that Louise is neither good nor evil, but a confusing, dangerous mess somewhere in the middle. But whenever I listen to this part of the song, I can't help but wish this phrase ending was major, like the last one we looked at. Compare what we actually hear... ...to how a major resolution would sound. or better yet, one into the other. 
that's nice. Don't you think that's nice? But just because it's subversive and fully resolved doesn't mean it's good. It just means that I personally like it. Clearly, putting a major chord there didn't fit the composer's vision, or they would have done it. If it was your piece, which chord would you have chosen? Heck, you could just keep it simple and resolve to F sharp minor, since again, that is the chord with the lowest tension in the key F sharp minor. The next bit of Outsider isn't present in Family, and it's a nice change of pace that slowly ramps back up to the top of the loop. Listen to the tension and release at the end here. Do you hear how good that resolution feels? It's because of this middle note here, the leading tone. Yeah, again, I'll stop talking about it when Okabe stops using it. This pattern is pretty common in classical music because it supercharges the next resolution to come after it, but in the near original soundtrack specifically, there's another prominent use of it, and I don't think it's a coincidence. Yes, the Shadow Lord. The chords don't quite match up, but they're remarkably close. What you just heard are the vocals of Shadow Lord played on top of the instrumental for Fleeting Words Outsider. This link makes perfect sense to me. Louise and the Shadow Lord are both able to take human forms as gestalts, and neither has relapsed into mindless aggression like their brethren. In fact, I suspect that Louise is another original gestalt, which would mean that, like the Shadow Lord, she would never relapse, and could even prevent other gestalts from relapsing if Project Gestalt were able to negotiate with her or capture her. But we'll never know, will we? Because someone had to draw the eye of Mr. Hate Crime over here, and that doesn't gel well with the whole living thing she was doing. A major difference between Louise and the Shadow Lord, however, is that Nier fundamentally misunderstands who the Shadow Lord is. With Louise, he sees her as a formidable and dangerous monster who's been killing innocents for no apparent gain. And yeah, that's accurate, it's just not the whole story. At their cores, all these two characters want is to have normal lives. Oh, you think you've got problems? Louise just wants to be a person, and she can't even have that. You're selfish! Unlike my awesome patrons, who help fund the channel and ask for virtually nothing in return. They do get to vote on the video topics, though, and every single one of you makes a significant difference in my life, so thank you. And again, thank you DoomerCZ for sending me the separated audio files I used to make that Shadow Lord mashup. You rock. Fleeting words, outsider, and family mostly feel different because of their separate tempos and instrumentations, but they also feature slightly different chord progressions under the same melody. Take the first phrase with vocals, for example. Instead of starting or ending the phrase with F-sharp minor, we have A major, which is brighter than a minor chord, and G-sharp diminished, which is super dissonant. So we're kind of all over the place. The piece overall is a bit sad, but the harp can't decide if it's having a great day or an existential crisis. Like, comment, and subscribe for more relatable content. We hear some lovely mallet percussion in this version, playing a moving line that falls like shimmering rain. This and the harp are what produce the fairy tale atmosphere of the piece. The phrases are much more traditional in Fleeting Words Family than Outsider, only one of them isn't four measures long. It seems likely that this version of the track has a little less to do with Louise. In Universe, Fleeting Words is a folk song that the postman teaches Louise. I imagine the family arrangement is close to what the characters know the song to be. So we don't just hear Louise in it, we also hear a bit of the postman, and the lighthouse lady, and all of Seafront. Fleeting Words Family is the song as it was meant to be, and Louise as she was meant to be. It's warm, sentimental, and full of wonder. 
So it seems sensible to me that we would mostly hear it during flashbacks between Louise and the postman as they grow closer together and she learns about the world outside. But we don't. Fleeting Word's family only plays once it's clear that family is something Louise will never have. Stop! No! What are you doing? You're gonna get yourself killed! I think it's especially effective that the song begins while the postman struggles against Louise's outstretched hand because the sudden calm brings out the poetry of the moment. There's revelation as Louise gets sudden clarity of her fate. There's the powerful symbol of her misunderstood gesture of love being met with an attack. We see Louise frozen and confused versus the postman in a thoughtless frenzy but failing to even make her flinch. And to come full circle, nothing in this world could wound Louise any deeper. We can never be together! You disgust me! is the girl who should have been, who loved a song she couldn't sing. In the end, she was only able to communicate a single message, but it was the one she needed to say the most. Oh, it says, thank you. <laughs> wow, look at this. After all that time I spent trying to teach her to write, she actually managed to string together a few ugly little letters. Why can't I stop seeing her smile? <laughs>